Hey everyone, Kyle from Mantic here, and with Kings of War 3rd Edition fresh on the scene, I thought I'd take some time to go over some strategy and tactics that can help you in your next game. This video is going to be about battle groups and deployment. Let's start off with the concept of battle groups. This strategy encourages you to deploy units with a similar function or even a supporting one into clusters on the battlefield as you deploy. So with a combat battle group, for example, let's take a look at an example that I have with my undead. Here's an example of a combat battle group. And what I have here is essentially four different units that go together and I would deploy these very similarly in just about every game that I play. So at the front, I have a unit of what I would consider chaff. This is a Revenant Cavalry Troop. And these guys are incredibly good in third edition because of their speed, their defense, and their nerve. Uh, they've got the ability to move eight inches. Uh, they do have shambling, so they can't go at the double, but they could charge up to 16, which is fantastic. Defense five, and then a fearless 14 nerve, meaning that they are gonna stick around. That means that this unit, I'm gonna have a lot of ability to essentially dictate uh, where these guys are gonna be able to charge when I need them to. And this play style is one where the Soul Reaver infantry uh, 25 attacks and a regiment on threes with crushing strength two is just absolutely devastating, but they have to hit first. Even though they're defense five, their nerve is 15, 17, so uh, they can be taken off fairly easily and you don't want them grinding. You want them to hit and then take the unit off and, and you're good to go. So with this type of deployment, what I've done is essentially put the Revenant Calf, which are height three, in front of the height two regiments of Soul Reaver Infantry. Behind them, I have a Necromancer Hero that inspires with the Inspiring Talisman. And I've also upgraded them to have heal three. These units together, uh, this is a very similar structure or cluster of how I would deploy. What I've done is I've taken careful consideration to look at the distancing between the units here. I've done that because if, for example, I have a unit that's in uh, their side arc here, or not side arc, but in off to the side, uh, and I, d I can't move them for some strange reason, can't move the Revenant Cab out of the way, if I need to pivot, I can still pick them up and place them and be within a clearing distance to move this unit out of the way. So that's a possibility and something that I need to pay attention to. And when you're doing it, that might be something that you consider. And the other thing that I've done is I've tried to keep this so that the leader point of each of these units is right past the edge of that Revenant Cavalry troop that's in front. That way they can still see past them if they need to, because that height three normally would block the, uh, essentially block the uh, line of sight of the units there so they couldn't charge something. And very commonly, uh, if, if shots are coming in from, you know, say for example, this direction, this unit is gonna provide cover for this unit. And from that direction, it's gonna provide cover here. Because of how I've done the, uh, <laughs> the leader point, it doesn't provide it if it's coming straight on because more than half of the unit is gonna be exposed in this way. So if you wanted to be more careful from shooting, maybe an early deployment would cluster these guys up just ever so slightly closer but you want to be careful because if you pivot here, you don't want to get stuck in a position where you'd overlap and then you can't do it. So I like to leave a little bit of a gap here that maintains the line of sight and everything in between so that all the movements are clear. Last but not least, way down here is my Necromancer with the Inspiring Talisman. This guy is very handy because he is able to inspire everybody within six inches. And I've made sure that my deployment maintains that six inch move or six inch bubble. So within six inches, everybody is covered very nice and easy. He is also nice and screened by that Revenant Cav in front. And as we advance throughout the game, I could always hide him behind these guys, but it's important that he can maintain line of sight to all the different units, just because his healing capabilities are great. And especially in Undead, when these guys have Life Leech 2, so that's two points of damage, and you could potentially heal up to three more with Heal 3. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're Life Leeching 2, and then you've got Heal 3 as well, it's really, really good. Another thing with this battle group, especially, uh, you know, even if it's not undead and you have a unit that's in front like this that has a wavering limit, a lower number on their nerve, uh, if you have a faster unit especially, you always want to remember that you have sideways movement too. So in the case of the Revenant Cavalry, when they're speed eight, uh, they have the ability to essentially move four inches sideways and get out of the way. And then I've got a completely clear lane and this unit is still protected. So it's just one way to keep in mind what you can do with a faster unit that's, cha that's chaff or at least meant to be getting in the way, that's what chaff would be. Uh, it dictates essentially when your opponent can charge you and, and, and how you can set up your own charges. So I like to put them out front for protection. And then I also like to be able to move them uh, in the ways that I need to with a fast unit that qualifies in that role.
Once you've got your battle group set up and you understand the synergy of how it's going to work with all of its functions on the tabletop, then it's time to start thinking about how your battle groups can work with the synergy of themselves. And once you figure that out, then you've got a deployment strategy on hand. So with my first battle group put together, I know I can sort of go from there. Uh, when I'm looking at deployment, I essentially want to put this together in a way that these units can now support each other in their different and varied roles. So the first thing that I'm gonna look at with this battle group is the terrain. And here I've got some impassable terrain, and then I've got an obstacle followed by a forest that is difficult terrain. And so what I wanna do is just make sure that as I've deployed my units, uh, each of them are supported by either their abilities or their synergy with, within each other and how they would work uh, in proximity. So something like this, for example, uh, great tools that you can get as you're uh, playing and, and collecting Kings of War, uh, something like a laser line of sight. So I'd wanna check this unit here. Uh, if I go in a completely straight line, does it clear that? Yes, it does. So if this unit moves forward, I'm not gonna run into that house. That would be a huge mistake on my part. Uh, same thing with this fence here. So if I look at this uh, from a completely straight point of view, this line makes sure that I'm not gonna hit that fence if I go completely straight. So that's essentially what I'm looking to do is make it through that gap. Now, this horde of revenants, they don't really mind so much if they hit that fence, and I don't mind, because I essentially want to bait my opponent into charging them. So if I consider the scenario or something like that, I might say, hey, uh, I'm gonna give these guys a token, or I'm gonna essentially go towards the center of the table towards a token there. That could be an important aspect to consider. And the other thing to consider is that this necromancer with the inspiring talisman is still actually inspiring them at six inches away all the way back here. And if I needed to throw a surge out, I could do that as well. Then on this side of the table, uh, I've taken another unit that is chaffed up with uh, Revenant Calf in a troop. I love this unit, you'll see. Uh, and then they are inspired by Revenant King. He's got uh, some options that you can put on him as well, but he's essentially there to inspire and be a character support that can shut down some other things if I need to. This regiment of Soul Reaver Cavalry, I've given the Potion of the Caterpillar, and I've put them directly behind this forest because doesn't matter if I have that potion, but that fence is an issue for me. So again, the skeletons here will essentially occupy that space so that it's not even a problem for me. And then they essentially become an anvil to my hammer. Moving down, I've got two hordes of whites and then another chaff unit of Revenant Cavalry. They've got a much clearer uh, lane as they're going forward throughout the battlefield. And then they are supported by a pharaoh with the wings of the honey maze. So the, this all, all whole section here can fly. Uh, they are shambling to some sense, but that Pharaoh also has shambling or also has surge as an option to cast on any of these units uh, and, and just sort of get me some extra tricks and things that I've done. So when they all go together, they support each other very well. The whites can essentially get around that forest if they need to as the game goes on and get a nasty flank. The Pharaoh can go chase down war engines and different things like that, uh, as can the Revenant King if he needs to. Mounted Vampire could be a really good option here depending on points. Everything sort of supports each other and it goes down the line into a nice solid battle line. The last thing that you want to keep in mind is essentially your scenario that's being played. So you want to make sure that your battle groups can still synergize between each other, but that throughout each game that you play in the 12 different scenarios that we have in Kings of War currently, you can move them around so that they can still achieve the objective of the specific scenario, because ultimately that's the entire goal of what you're trying to do when you're playing the game. So just make sure that your battle, battle groups can stick together, but then they could be moved to one side or the other possibly to avoid terrain in certain instances and then still support each other and achieve their goals. Last but not least, uh, try not to pay too much attention to what your opponent's doing in their deployment. It can be easy to get caught up in exactly how they're deploying and you want to try to counter things as perfectly as possible, and in some instances that is important. But for the most part, if you have a strategy on what you're doing with your deployment, as it applies to the scenario that you're playing, that's gonna be way more effective than it is to try to counter exactly what they're doing. So if you have an objective going in and you know exactly what you're trying to do and you put your battle groups in a place to achieve that objective, what they're doing won't matter because ultimately you're gonna to come to the middle of the board or wherever you end up clashing in, in the game and you'll find that your synergies will work together to a much greater benefit. So that's it for the deployments and battle group strategies that I wanted to go over for you guys. Hopefully that was helpful for you and you learned a little bit of something, especially for new players that are looking to put together their very first armies. 
Try to find the synergy in the different units that you like. If you find a unit that you like, then find the units that would go along with it. Try to find the chaff or the inspiring characters or the auras that could benefit from it, the magical artifacts, that sort of thing. And then make sure that you cover your bases with the different scenarios. Make sure that you have enough units to essentially win a dominate circle or get the control quarters on the table so that you can actually take advantage of what the scenarios are. So uh, hopefully that's helpful for you guys. We've got a lot more coming up, so uh, stay tuned and uh, let us know if you have any specific requests on types of strategies and uh, manners of winning in Kings of War, essentially at that strategic and tactical level. Thanks, guys.